is her nickname. Oh, that's right. This girl's on fire. Now, is that a... Is that Alicia Keys? It's not... All right, it's Alicia Keys. I was going to say Beyonce. Because anytime you say Beyonce, you get a million followers. But yeah, I know Alicia Keys. And this girl's on fire. That's what Sinisa super bad Estrada in the ring with a record of 11 and 0. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. Pactado a ocho rounds en la división de peso mosca. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for our main event of the evening. Set for eight rounds of boxing in the flyweight division. Presented by Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. Tecate. The official beer of boxing. En Casa Mexico Tequila, it's in the taste. Your three judges scoring. Sus tres jueces. Carla Kais, Fernando Villarreal, and Rudy Barragan. And when the action begins, your third man, el tercero en la superficie, Raúl Kais Jr. Ahora bien, amigos que nos siguen, a través de la señal de Estrella TV, los presentes desde la tradición boxística en el centro de Los Ángeles, el Teatro Velasco. And now for our boxing fans in attendance and millions watching around the world on Estrella TV. Live from the boxing tradition de Velasco here in downtown LA, California, USA. Presentando ustedes en la esquina Tecate Azul, vistiendo los colores mexicanos, verde, blanco y rojo, con un peso de 110 libras. Presenta un récord de 8 victorias, 5 derrotas, un empate y una victoria por la vía del knockout. Introducing the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing the Mexican colors, green, white and red. Her official weight 112 pounds. In her professional campaign, he stands with a record of eight wins against five losses, one draw, and one win coming by the fast way of knockout. Representando, representing Ciudad de México, Mexico. Sonia Osorio. And her opponent across the ring is standing in the ring corner wearing gold and black her official weight 108.8 pounds y su rival en la esquina de cate roja vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con oro con un peso de 108.8 libras as a professional he st she stands unblemished with a record of 11 wins no losses and two of those wins coming by the fast way of knockout presenta un record de 11 victorias, 0 derrotas y 2 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout representando el este de Los Ángeles, California representing East LA, California, USA Super Bad Señeza with the final instructions con las indicaciones finales Raul Kais Jr. Fighter Chief second please Fighter Chief second Mouthpiece Protector Okay ladies you received the instructions in the dressing room know what I expect a good clean fight Gary Smith likes to stones que una pelea limpia legal punches golpes legales here for you here for you touch gloves love to both of you buenas tardes a todos Oh, Kais Jr., the third person in the ring as we get ready to go for our male event. And they're almost identical when, when we look at the tail of the Jeez. tape. They are the same age at 25. They are the same height. And Osorio has a very slight reach advantage. Box. Women's boxing, this one will be two-minute rounds. Marlena Sparza has used three-minute rounds in her fights. This was scheduled for eight. Estrada, super bad. She's now 25 years old. Fan friendly style. And she packs the house. She brings a crowd. That's another thing. You can sell some tickets, put on a show, you can get, move up quickly. 
Yeah, that's when I first took notice of her was when she was fighting on Gennady Golovkin's undercards at the Forum in Inglewood. She brought in an early crowd for those preliminary bouts. Stop! East to lay on the back of her trunks. Her opponent, Sonia Sonio. Also, studied to be a lawyer in Mexico City. She has a day job, boxes and trains at night. A little lazy about it. Estrada capitalizes with the right hand. Quick hook from Estrada. Sinisa kind of has her own style. You, you, you notice there's, we haven't seen a straight jab yeah. from Estrada so far. She has the same coach, Dean Campos, as Sergio Mora. Really? The former uh, junior middleweight title holder and middleweight contender. The Latin snake? He, yeah, he teaches kind of an unorthodox style there. There's a lot of footwork. Um, there's a lot of timing and combinations involved in that style, but it's um, everything isn't predicated by the jab. Clinch, Estrada lands a, a perfect left hook right on the button. Estrada lands two overhand shots while Osorio's back was to the ropes. Dougie, ask and you shall receive our man Neil Macasario. Went digging. Found that picture of you in Mercito Hesta. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I like that. I wonder what else we can ask people. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm actually working. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate you. Uh, I don't just edit. I get out there and interview these fighters every now and then. Exactly. Uh, maybe if we can ask for some food delivered to the studios, we get everything we need. Sanisa started in the black switching southpaw stance. Yeah, Perfect record of 11 and 0. You'll see her do that. So Sergio Mora works with her? Or no, it's, it, she has the same head coach that Sergio Mora had Got for it. his entire career, or most of his, his professional career and amateur career, as a matter of fact. So and that's, that's Dean Campos, yeah. So you'll see some Latin snake with Estrada. And it's being crafty, a lot of head and upper body movement. Velasco Theater, always excitement in the voices of me and Doug whenever we get a chance to call the LA Fight Club. It's a good vibe. April 6th will be the next one. Marlena Spars will be the main event. As you talked about it, Doug, it'll be a showdown later down the road. I mean, I think that's just a natural thing to do. Why not? As Osorio bring us the pressure now. Osorio is a solid fighter. The couple of fights I found of Osorio on YouTube, it's, she'll come at you, she's willing to trade, aggressive, and she'll hold you, just like she's doing right there. Well, that might be a good thing against Estrada, who's definitely a, a, a rhythmic boxer. She may have an unorthodox style, but she's still... She's, she's still a rhythmic fighter. She's still in and out. She likes to get odd angles on her opponents. One, two from Osorio. I think Osorio, last one. I, I think Osorio is best served when she's working a jab.
Osorio on her toes. Gets a grazing overhand right in. Tries to touch her with a jab. Let's see a far away angle of that. Estrada lands a kind of a clumsy looking left hook as she's backing away. Shout out to Boxy Love 3003 streaming us right now, posting us on the Instagram or the gram as the kids call it. And Brandon Stubb says, I hate two minute rounds, but it seems to make the fighter far more aggressive at the start. I would agree with that, but it seems weird having two minute rounds, but they still have a one minute rest between those rounds. It's a sprint. It seems, well, it seems like they should have 30 second rest in between. <laughs> That would really move it along. Doug <laughs> trying to take away the minute break. <laughs> well, either that or, or, you know, female professionals should fight three minute rounds. Why change the rules for them? Sonia Osorio coming from the Ciudad de Mexico, the DF. Less than a minute to go. Now they're starting to exchange. Quick hook from Estrada from the southpaw stance. Looks very comfortable switching back and forth. Here Osorio's corner telling her the uppers. Estrada throws her own. Now I see what you're talking about, Doug. She was right-handed, but she came in and threw a punch that ended up being from the southpaw stand. Yeah, that's and that's the kind of thing you would see the Latin snake do. It's difficult. Lands that left hook. She might have found a home for it. Lands another one, does a strata. Sorry, oh, lands the right left. Done with three. Osorio pushing Estrada's head down, Estrada punishing her with a, a left to the temple. More jostling for position on the inside, a, a short right cross landed by Osorio as she backed out of that clinch. Fourth round of action, undefeated. Sidious so Estrada in the black coming out. I think Estrada is, is better served when she's throwing straight punches from the outside because I do think she's the faster of the two. Definitely. And so I like the, those jab right hands, those one-two combinations that she landed to start this round, out, round off, and I'd like to see more of that. Second time Estrada slated to go eight rounds, turned pro back in 2011. And when she does that, when she when, when she's throwing just your, your standard jab right hand right down the pike, she backs Osorio up every time. But when she's doing the super bad posturing, I don't think those styles mesh well. I mean, it, it's, it's a competitive fight that I have Estrada winning, but um, there's too many clinches. And there's uh, the potential for, uh, you know, an accidental clash ahead or an elbow here and there. It could be a cleaner boxing match, I think, if uh, Estrada gets her punches off from the outside and if they're straight punches. 
Estrada's last fight back in uh, September went the distance. The Nahi Torres was a veteran record 16 and 16. That one went eight rounds. And Osorio, the official record tonight has her eight and five, but there's another record out there has her at 10 and five. So she's got experience underneath her belt. She's definitely game. She's not coming into this fight with uh, an opponent's mentality. Uh-oh. She, yep, she thought that was the bell. That was the 10-second warning. And Estrada is a sportswoman. She didn't take advantage of uh, Osorio dropping her guard prematurely. Estrada measuring Osorio with her left. Backs her up with the right. Lands a nice right cross as Osorio bounces off the ropes. Estrada beating Osorio to the punch with her, her one-two combinations. You were talking about, Doug, this state of women's boxing, how these girls 10 years ago had nowhere to look to move on. They're now breaking down barriers and they're doing it for the next generation also. Lexi Garcia, seven years old, watching in Las Vegas on the iPad, her favorite fighter, Sinisa Estrada. So now these young fighters are serving as role models for the next generation. Lexi, her brother Carmelo, her aunt Jessica Rosales, of course, who we work with. Showing these girls they could do anything. I got a tweet from Sulem Urbina. She's a flyweight, so she's in the same division as Estrada from Phoenix and Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. And yeah, she I says, know her. You said, why treat them different? Do we get paid as much as men do? Just a simple question. As Sanisa's well, telling I her to hit me. Yeah. I definitely think female fighters should be paid the same as men uh, get paid if, if you know, at the at a similar um, with similar weight class and experience. There's and I definitely think that women should fight three minute rounds because that's what you do in in the pros. Yeah, maybe amateurs, okay. Right, and I know Marlena Sparza is a proponent of that. Marlena Sparza. Saw her, actually, her pro debut. She was the first female to fight three-minute rounds. Yeah, I don't know if that was in her pro debut or in a, 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 it was a an Vegas. undercard. It was a, a, about on a, a, a pay-per-view undercard, probably. Chavez yeah. Canelo, that's right. Yeah, it wasn't her debut. I think it was her second fight. This is, uh, this is good action. Brisk round five. And Estrada has uh, shifted gears. But she's also, she's being just as uh, defense-minded as she is offense-minded. Fighting here. Strada getting off with her left hand. Osorio coming back, but not landing any of those punches. And Estrada dares her to try and land one on the chin. Osorio hesitated, so Estrada took advantage of it. Six rounds, scheduled for eight. So to the Bucket Boys out on a Friday night, in their fix, 
of boxing. Thanks for watching everybody all over. Anthony at Starbucks in Vista watching us tonight. Strada really loading up with that left hand. Osorio's well, chin seems solid to me. Right hand from Estrada. When she sits there and stays in that conventional style, that's what you like, huh? Yes, I do. But I, I don't think Estrada needs to make it as physical a fight as she's making it. Not that I'm complaining because no, no. It, it is entertaining. It's fun, it's fun. But make it more work for yourself. But I think she's uh, the faster, more agile of the two. And I think she could consistently beat Osorio to the punch from the outside if she was just working her, uh, an orthodox jab and um, looking to land a straight right hand. I think she's fighting a, a, an, an active fight. That was a nice left hand. I believe that was landed from the southpaw stance as she was stepping forward to Osorio. And Osorio came at her. Hook from Osorio. Solid shot. Six round winding down. Action picking up between Sinisa Estrada, Sonia Osorio. The main event, the Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Strada lands a, a straight left as she's stepping forward and switching stances, orthodox to southpaw. And these are some nice clubbing left hooks that she is landing as she's sort of giving ground to Osorio. You know, she launched that straight left from the southpaw stance, and by the time it landed, she was in an orthodox stance. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened there. Strada comes out aggressive to start the seventh. I got a tweet from a guy named Alex Martinez who says, I think Estrada may benefit from a more fixed style. That unorthodox style is fun, but I believe she could do better with a, a, a more disciplined style. And I think that's the case for this fight, but I, I don't know if that's the case for every fight. It just seems to me when Estrada is operating from the outside or mid-range, Osorio can't land. And I think Osorio would be wise whenever they're in close or they're, in a, they're grappling or in a clinch to work the body like she's just doing right there. Work Estrada's body. And Those she are lands punches the she left land. hook. One of the yeah. few times that she's actually gone to the body with Sario in this fight. Yeah, I noticed that um, Estrada's body is there to be pounded when they're in close. There she goes. Sario should, should concentrate on the body, even though we're in the late stages of this bout. In the corner of Osorio telling her, keep the pressure two more rounds. Oh, and boxing coach James Gogi out of Texas says, so far he likes what he sees in Sin uh, Sinisa. Just needs to throw body punches, and I would agree with that. That's how you say it. There's, there's a jab to the body. Yeah, Gogi. He's been around. Him yes, Steve, he has. Him and Steve Kim were getting into the manager talk yesterday on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Gogi does a good work. I actually met him here at one of the Belasco shows. He had a fighter out of oh, Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. You hear the crowd cheering on Sinisa. Final seconds of the seventh round. Osorio. Eighth final coming up. Hey, Osorio's given a tremendous oh, yeah. effort. I want the. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. 
Osorio trying to work Estrada along the ropes. Estrada getting her shots in. It was a cross followed by a left hook to the temple. It was a straight right landed by Estrada as she charges in. Osorio works the body and when she does, she actually lands those punches. Eighth and final round, the main event, the Belasco Theater, Sinisa Estrada, Sonia Osorio. Thanks to everybody interacting with us on Twitter. Appreciate you guys. The next Belasco Theater will be April 6th. We have Marlena Sparza as the main event. Also, I see Hector Tanahara on that card. And the Sinisa crowd making her noise. A very popular fighter out of East LA. Has the crowd behind her, has the sponsors with her. And Osorio, not here to back down. She's coming on strong. And Osorio trying to pull off the upset just like Virginia did. Oh, no, Virginia didn't. They lost the number one seed, loses UMBC. So for those of you that got your bracket busted watching the boxing, welcome. Sinisa Estrada, less than a minute to go in the fight. And Lexi Garcia watching us in Vegas. I saw that reaction, Lexi. Put the hands in the face. Tell you, we'll give everybody the shout out. You let us know. Osorio's well, having a decent eighth round here. Yep. Maybe a little bit, a little too low. A little too late. Yeah, it's, it's definitely too late. Sinisa has that fun style where you want to see her. Yeah, nice movement. She's got, she's got really good head and upper body yep. movement. And she does a good job of getting under punches and, and sliding over to either side. Got good footwork. She, it's a very energetic style. Solid right hand. She's looking kind of fatigued here in the eighth round. You, know, you do wonder if she expends a little too much energy with that style. But she's in with a solid opponent. A fun fight. Sinisa Estrada, Sonia Osorio, they go the distance. Eight good rounds, and the crowd at the Blasco in the main event got a good show. The two fighters embrace sportsmanship. Go to the judges. It's a good way to come out in your Golden the Boy promotional debut. Strada didn't, uh, she didn't hold back. No? I would say she emptied the tank tonight. If you're going to be the main event, you really need to, You should do that. You should you're do absolutely that. right. Absolutely right. Right, Lettles jamming. Super bad. Got the cape back on. Got the marketing. Here you go, Joe. Get that hat ready. Little, little scrape underneath her eye, right? Not the too bad. Yeah, who knows? That could have come from like a clash of heads. Yeah. see some highlights here this was uh, that was from the the eighth round the eighth round the eighth and final round of a physical fight yeah they started picking it up towards the end they did and I think Osorio figured out a little bit too late that she could get to Estrada's body whenever they engaged on the inside I think now you see why Osorio's lost five because it's a little bit too late she's a fun fighter though yeah, What's these quality. Ladies, put on a show. As a Tijuanero, Pablo Flores in the ring. I wonder if he knows Chivale. International man of mystery. <laughs> what are you looking at, Pablo? He's looking at the DJ. He's looking at everybody. Take charge, Pablo. Atta, baby. So he's just trying to walk maybe, around the ring. Maybe uh, his microphone isn't working. You gotta make sure so these crowds quiet too, so they can hear the decision. Testing, testing. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. C, C, C. Oh, those three. C, C. 
Oh, he can't hear himself. Yeah, we hear him. Si, si, si. Dos, tres, si. Si, Pablo, you sound like the DJ at the Quinceanera. Dos, tres, si. Si, como, como, si. Right now, we want to take next to Sean Hendricks as he walks out the room. Sean Hendricks leaving on his way. He's on his way to Las Vegas. But first, go get a pizza, Sean. Sean does a great job here behind the scenes. He's actually moving to Las Vegas. We will miss him. Where are you, bro? As it is a crack staff here with the Golden Boy Media Entertainment. Come on, man. Pablo's mic Please. should be muted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Aquí estoy, mijo. Aquí estoy. As uh, he's testing his mic, want to make sure everything's good going. <laughs> Somebody, just tell him. Come Somebody. As, uh, right now, once again, Doug Fisher uh, on Twitter. Follow him and go and email his mailbag. See, uh, Pablo, see. <laughs> you guys think we're messing around. No, no, we're not messing around. We're, this is live TV, baby. We'll do it live here. You see the international man of mystery, Roberto Diaz, down low when you got the vest. Oh, man. You're the boy matchmaker. Does a lot of stuff. That's right. Put your hands up, Roberto. Changing microphones. All right, Pablo. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, here you go. After eight rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' court cards. Después de ocho rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. Let's give a big round of applause. For Osorio en Estrada. Fuerte el aplauso por Osorio Estrada por este gran combate. All three judges have the same scores. Carla Caiz, Fernando Villarreal, and Rudy Barragán, 80 to 72. Los tres jueces coinciden sus tarjetas, 80 a 72. Por lo tanto, su ganadora por la vía de la decisión unánime. Your winner by the way of unanimous decision. Super bad in the house, East LA, California. Senyesa Estrada. Congratulations to Senyesa Estrada on her first Golden Boy main event. Gets a victory, unanimous decision. She's now 12 and 0. Her opponent, Sonia Osorio, falls at 8. It was a real camp. Yeah, I think that was good for uh, Orozco uh, to be away from family and and to be around uh, a world champion like Oscar Valdez. Who we know, I mean, we already knew this guy had heart, that he loves boxing and that he, that he lives for this battle, but, you know, he proved it without a shadow of a doubt in his last fight against Scott Quigg, against a guy who was unnaturally heavy, as a matter of fact, guy who didn't, you know, make uh, the featherweight limit and, and came in over 140 pounds and thus was more durable probably than he, he normally would have. And, and Scott Quigg, you know, even when he makes weight, even when he's at 1, 122 pounds, he comes into the ring big, um, and uh, he's a durable guy. And, he, you know, a former world title holder himself with a lot of experience. So you knew the fight was going to be tough, but that fight was really grueling. And it's, it's good for Orozco to be around these guys who, you know, he doesn't just give 100% on fight night. Valdez gives 100% in the gym every day. And you see that as he's landing the one two, listening to his corner as Honorio's on the ropes now. This time you see some fatigue on the face of Honorio. The shots are starting to mount up. Yeah, being in Guadalajara and, and speaking with Manny Robles just said these guys had to focus and lock in. And the sacrifice you put to get away from your family. Roscoe has a bunch of young kids. You know, having a FaceTime them just to see what they were up to with playing their own games and for the sacrifices you make. If you really want to get your life back on your career where you expected it to be. Correct. And here, Arnaudio, it's he's just game right now. That's it. He has a heart, but he doesn't have much else right now. You can see how slow his punches are. He's slowed down visibly in this round. Roscoe's body does look good. But I am seeing a little bit of, of wear and tear on the face of Orozco. And there was a right cross that landed to his cheekbone. And I think he's got the kind of skin and bone structure where you land a shot underneath the eye, it's going to swell up a little bit. Hey, the 
lo hiciste muy bien poniendo de presión al vato. Last round he put on pressure, you didn't do it this time. Te estás cansando. Are you getting tired? Orozco falls short with a, a straight right. Orozco does not fall short with his return straight right and snap the head back of the veteran. There's a, a stiff jab followed by a, a, a hard right, followed by a left hook. I like the way you're maintaining distance, but when you step back, don't step back too far. One step back and then come back inside. Whole fighter taking their time to get up for the seventh round. I think there's uh, a few technical flaws and some bad habits that Orozco has that Manny Robles is is seeing and and pointing out to him as this fight progresses. Because you can see stuff in sparring, but until it's, you actually get in a it's fight, it's different. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> Snapping that jab of Orozco. You can hear Manny in the corner saying combinations. Honorio oh, with the black and gold, that's enough wide open. Eats another jab. Check hook from Honorio. Boy, oh, if you could take oh, the slip through the ring. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that happen with okay. one of the the you preliminary okay? bouts. Actually, the, the first bout yeah. of the night, somebody. Okay, we'll Watch out, Spanish announcers. There's a foot coming your way. That's right. But if you could take the, the experience and ring savvy that Honorio has hard-earned and put it into the body of uh, a fighter in his prime, that'd be a dangerous dude. Because <laughs> he knows his way around the ring. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he's lost six of his last seven. Yes. But he's been in them. I mean, he could tr lose his easily, but he doesn't make it an easy night for anybody. That's true. And that was true for his last opponent, who was uh, a, a young prospect out of Philadelphia named uh, Damon Allen. And Damon, Damon had to box one of his better performances to, to earn that unanimous decision. Over eight rounds. That was in December in Canada. So Honorio is uh, still a road warrior, even at this stage of his career. Rosco trying to dig. Well, Manny had asked him for combinations. There you see. Body shot. And combination punching is very important for a fighter of Orozco's athleticism and his stature. He's not going to be able to land a lot of really powerful shots from the outside. He's not one of those tall, rangy, skinny guys that have a lot of snap on his punches. He's not that type of uh, athlete. Um, he, he's, he's got good, good physical strength. He's going to need to apply smart pressure the way he was over the first half of this bout. And when he gets inside, he's got to land you know, three and four punch combinations to the body and head to wear his guys down because he doesn't have one punch knockout power. Wow, I'm impressed with those two right crosses that Honorio oh, landed at the stop. end of the round, man. You got to be careful who you match up Honorio with if you're a, match, if a promoter. Beautiful jab landed by uh, Orozco as Honorio is on the move. Honorio tries to land a right uppercut, this is with a hook. He's able to evade a right cross from Orozco. But late in that round, he landed some, some uh, crosses. And there's the slip. Former champ Daniel Ponce de Leon is looking on. Got the hands ready too. <laughs> he still has those fighter reflexes. Good fight. Ponce does it all. He, he trains fighters, he manages a few, and he's doing Spanish commentary. Well, Doug edits a magazine and does a website and go. writes a column <laughs> and does shows there you go. and a podcast and he skips rope. <laughs> 
Yeah, about that point, sit. Because you can't hear it, that's why you said it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Better than that, Doug Fisher, and you all over the world watching us. My man, Marco J311. Happy birthday month to you. You're too old to be having a birthday month. Happy birthday. The fight fan is usually at the Velasco, not tonight. Velasco will be back in April, so the monthly series will continue to go. And Antonio Roscoe hopes that he'll never be back here in the ring, maybe watching. I, I'd like to see him hanging up. A Roscoe? Not a Roscoe. <laughs> oh, Nori, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not talking about a Roscoe. He doesn't want to be back. Oh, he does not want to be back. On, he wants no. to be on ESPN. No, he, he wants to be, be on ESPN. Absolutely. Hey, Honorio, yo, yo, Doug, we're going to see Honorio's name in about seven years from now. You're like, wait a minute, he's still fighting? I, I hope not. And just, he's just that. He's doing thing. some nice stuff yeah. in there, man. He's got some craft. He's that road warrior Mexican dude. That just, man, he was switching. He was punching from that different right. stances as he was backing up. And now he's coming forward against this young man who's, who's landing body shots and a really stiff jab. He's, I mean, he, and, and, you know, his punch output is pretty good, too. You know, having said that, he's lost every round. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, the, you know, the, the, the official scorecards don't tell the story of the fight. Beautiful overhand right landed by Orozco. See, Roscoe, you, you don't call him a prospect anymore. No, he's no, there. he's 30 years old, um, and he's got he's got some good wins. I mean, he's got a win over Humberto Soto. Um, yeah, his home. last fight was really impressive. You know, that was an ESPN co-feature against the 16-0-1 Keandre Gibson, and he took him out in four rounds. Um, you know, when he's on, he's... Uh, He's, he's definitely, he's a legitimate contender. He's got uh, former world title holder Stevie Forbes on his ledger. That's right. Um, he's got some solid fighters on his ledger. You just want to see him be consistent. That's what his career lacks. He has not been able to capitalize on, on good performances and create some real career momentum. Martin Onario. See his name on a bow sheet. Go watch him. The man will give you everything he has as he and Antonio Roscoe go the distance. Roscoe shook off some rust when he needed. Made the weight easy. Got the Zoe Beal plan hooked up. Looking right. It's manager Frank Espinosa and Frank Jr. talking about uh, Antonio Roscoe goes on to get the unanimous decision. Improves his 27 and 0. Welcome back here to the Velasco Theater. A good night of boxing at the first L.A. Fight Club of 2018. The main event tonight is Anissa Estrada got the decision over Sonia Osorio. Uh, Estrada headlining for the first time in her Golden Boy promotional deal. The co-feature, Oscar Duarte got a six-round KO. And let's look at the recap of tonight. You got the cool music. And it all started with Joe Gonzalez. I don't even think he broke a sweat, Doug. A first-round KO not. for him. He did not break a sweat. He may have broken poor Martinez's nose. Definitely battered the veteran. Tito great. And then Oscar Duarte, Parral Chihuahua. He had to work for it, but finally was able to stop Jorge Rodriguez out of the Joe Diaz stable in Coachella. And he continues to improve. Uh, that This was a, a very entertaining fight. And Duarte is an entertaining, young, lightweight prospect to continue watching. 22-year-old is now 13 and oh, in the main event. They went the distance, Sanisa Estrada had flashes of just continuing to dominate the fight, able to land some good shots. Osorio was very game though, a, a fun scrap. Yeah, Estrada won by uh, unanimous shutout scores.